What's up everybody, it's Ivan with Trout Plevaging back with the forecast for June 5th. We're out on the deck, the back deck at the Trout's Denver shop. South Platte right there, it's pretty cool. See some carp, y'all should come check it out, whatever. Anyway, talking about bugs, flows, and weather, we're gonna talk about what's on the horizon for the next couple weeks. Um, we obviously had a smaller snowpack than normal, but there's still some runoff conditions going on. If you look at the sort of trend over the last month, you're still seeing it on the rise. Uh, there have been fishable pockets. Uh, as I've mentioned before, you can still fish during runoff. Um, you just have to find the right conditions. And so we had some, some cooler stretches and during those cooler stretches, you know, the runoff reduced. You didn't have as much uh, uh, snow melt coming off. And as a result, we had some clearer water. Uh, obviously some weird stuff going on in the Colorado because uh, you know, they're not releasing uh, water from some of those uh, upstream trips. So the uh, Colorado is really low, lower than Gore Creek, which is weird, but uh, we'll see how that progresses. Uh, and if those tributaries start getting, pumping a little bit more water into it. Uh, so yeah, let's get down to it. Let's talk bugs, flows, and weather. Let's talk bugs. The Double Fuego, I'm going uh, big flashy streamer here, articulated it as well. It's, Obviously pushes a lot of water, has some good weight to it, so it's gonna get down. You can fish this on an intermediate, a sinking line, even fishing on a floating line with a longer leader. Uh, I really like this fly. I think I've talked about it before. Um, it always sort of grabs my attention and a big, big, uh, big confidence guy. And this one gives me confidence. So I chose the, the double fuego. Number two, uh, Stoneflies are out, obviously. Those, those are starting to wane on the Colorado. Uh, you'll start to see them on uh, the Gunnison here sh shortly enough. Uh, but you're gonna start to see yellow or golden stones and then uh, you know hoppers and stuff like that are gonna start to be more prevalent. Uh, fish are gonna be looking up. A royal chubby, big fan of the royal chubby. Sort of an ode to the old uh, classics with the you know, that royal uh, red and green coloration on the, uh, on the body. Uh, but a chubby's a chubby in my opinion. It'll hold up big bugs, so uh, when you have clearer water, uh, which we should be seeing here in the next two weeks, uh, you know, I would imagine that we're going to start to see the, the decline will start to drop on the back end of uh, runoff, and uh, a royal chubby is a hard fly to beat, especially when you're trying to pick up fish in the soft pockets and then also hold uh, bigger flies uh, when you're trying to run a seam. So a great option there. Bug number three. It's going to be simply an Adams. This is a PMD Adams. So uh, PMDs are starting to appear on the Colorado. Uh, they're also going to start to appear here on the uh, South Platte as well. Uh, PMDs, Pale Morning Duns, uh, great option, especially in the riffles. You'll start to, you know, you can run those uh, PMD nymphs or, uh, you know, your uh, pheasant tails through the riffles as uh, the, that hatch starts to uh, wind up or, or get ready. Uh, in the beginning of the, you know, in the middle mid morning, and then uh, you can fish uh, a single dry or a double dry. Uh, I chose bars uncased caddis, so summer caddis are going to be present uh, on a, a lot of our, uh, well, most every one of our uh, favorite rivers. Uh, uncased caddis is a great option. Uh, bars flies obviously catch fish. Huge fan of, the, uh, of a variety of his flies. And the uncased caddis is certainly productive, especially on the Colorado. I really like this on the Colorado. And then finally, if you're fishing hopper droppers, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, a j some sort of jig nymph. Uh, I've become, in recent years, become a bigger fan of throwing jig nymphs under uh, you know, bigger dry flies if I'm throwing a, throwing a hopper dropper. It gets down in the, it gets down in the water column quickly. Uh, so you're going to get into the feeding zone quickly, which is good, because especially when you're, you know, maybe fishing pockets, uh, fishing, you know, these shorter, you know, shorter, good productive pieces of water, but they require a shorter drift because you're going to sort of move on to that next, uh, you know, next sort of feature. Uh, something like the blowtorch is a, a great option. Uh, it has a little bit of soft tackle, so it adds a little bit of extra motion. It has a, a, a orange wrap near the head, a little bit of a hot spot. Uh, and it gets down, it gets down quick, a little slotted bead, gets down quick, catches fish. It's impressionistic enough where it's gonna look like a lot of uh, bugs that will be present during the summertime. So uh, love throwing urine nymphs or jig nymphs, however you wanna say it, uh, underneath a bigger dry fly like a stimulator or uh, that royal, royal stimulator, or royal chubby I should say. So there you go, those are the flies. Let's get to weather. Nope, flows. I did.
All right, let's get to flows. Starting off, number one, tailwaters still relatively low. Uh, obviously, you have a couple feeder creeks in coming in around Deckers uh, that are bumping the flow a little bit there. So it's coming out like at 46 from Cheeseman and it's uh, around 96 around Deckers. Um, you know, that changes it a little bit down low, but for the most part, the same bugs are going to be uh, you're gonna, are going to be present. You need the caddis, your blue wings, your midges, your attractors, uh, and PMDs are going to start to show up as well. Uh, you know, the same thing goes for like 11 mile and dream stream flows have been relatively consistent, uh, in that, you know, mid 50 range, uh, 60 range, I think on, on the, on the dream stream. So, uh, nothing crazy there. Uh, I would expect that at some point we will see elevated flows. Uh, I don't think they will be that elevated just with the way snowpack it has been. I haven't heard anything, uh, as to when they're going to release. Uh, you know, I was looking at, uh, how filled the reservoirs were and there's still, you know, there's still some reservoirs that are, are looking to to add some more water. So I think once the reservoirs fill and they sort of feel comfortable with how much water they have in the reservoirs, we'll start to see some flows change, but uh, nothing confirmed yet. So uh, we'll stay tuned for that. Obviously we have the fishing information page, stream flows page. Uh, stay tuned to that stuff uh, to make sure you're uh, on top of those flows uh, because they, they obviously they could change at any time. Or they might, who knows. Uh, so <clears throat> that's uh, the tailwaters, the freestones. If you look at the overall trend, uh, you know, they look pretty steady over the last seven days for the most part. Uh, but if you look at the overall trend, we're still rising. We're still on the rising limb of the hydrograph for uh, our annual spring runoff, uh, specifically on the Eagle, on the Roaring Fork, uh, the Arkansas a little bit as well. Um, the Colorado is a different story. Um, you know, a lot of those tributaries, you know, aren't pumping in water yet because they didn't have a ton of snowpack, so they're not uh, pushing water downstream yet and as a result the Colorado is at the Kremlin is like lower than Gore Creek uh, so Gore Creek's pumping with runoff but uh, you know like just as the you know as a result and the Eagles also you know pretty high down near Jepson I think it's around a thousand last time I checked um, and so you're we're probably we're probably getting close to the crest we're probably getting close to the peak of runoff on those rivers but the Colorado uh, it's going to be a little bit different this year uh, hopefully we do see some water move through the system uh, wouldn't want it to be low throughout the summer um, you know obviously we need some some good uh, rain some monsoonal rains to make sure we have uh, good clean water good clean temperate water appropriately temperatured water uh, throughout the summer so we don't run into any temp issues but yeah flows uh flows we're sort of getting i'm probably close to the peak uh and we'll start to see it fall here uh in the next two weeks is my guess and uh, we'll sort of get into that you know classic more classic summertime fishing um you know as we progress through the month of june so uh <clears throat> probably gonna peak a little bit earlier than normal uh, but that makes sense with the the snowpack that we had um yeah there we go let's talk about uh, let's talk about weather All right, weather, looking at both the high country up near Vail and then also looking uh, at around Deckers. <clears throat> around Deckers is gonna be uh, getting pretty summery, so it's gonna be in the 80s for the most part. Uh, some isolated thunderstorms, but for the most part, it's gonna be sunny with a, little, you know, a couple of clouds scattered around for the next uh, 10 days or so. Um, up in Vail, looks like it's in the, you know, in the mid 70s. So that's snow melting weather. Uh, start to see, you know, that snowpack burn, you know, be, burn off completely and uh, get into, uh, you know, that sort of the fall, the drop on a lot of our uh, favorite free stones. So uh, weather's not particularly crazy. Uh, it's what you sort of would expect uh, out of June. And uh, yeah, here we are. We're about, we're about in prime time right now, guys. Uh, sort of like traditional prime time. Like there's there's obviously a lot of really good seasons or good times throughout the year, in my opinion, uh, but we're getting into that, uh, you know, the really uh, wild time where you get a lot of different bugs hatching. Uh, you have to be on your feet. You have to cross your eyes, dot your T's. That's how it goes, right? That's how I do it. Dot your eyes and cross your T's when it comes to bringing all your bugs. Uh, there's going to be a lot of bugs present. You know, drakes will start to show up. You know, you're going to have like, you know, the PMDs, the caddis, uh, you know, blue wings will still be around every once in a while. Like it's going to be, uh, you know, golden stars. It's going to, there's going to be a lot of things going on. So I'm uh, making sure you have your, uh, fly boxes full, 
a full selection of uh, leader and tippets so you can change your rigs whether you're nymphing, dry dropper, streamer, dry flies. You know, obviously there's a lot of great options. Uh, just making sure you're prepared uh, for this time of year I think is most important. So uh, yeah, appreciate you guys tuning in from the, uh, the deck here at Trouts Denver. We hope to see you here or up in our uh, Frisco location. As always, TroutsFlyFishing.com. Okay, bye-bye.